Friday, November 4th. This is the SGT SAC meeting of MSU Denver. People could put their attendance in the chat. That would be great. Thank you, counselors, for being here. All right, on to announcements. Paul, go ahead. Thank you. I'll make this quick. I had um, an announcement from Miguel come by, stopped in our office, says there's going to be an event on the 29th. It'll be an opportunity for us to meet with people wanting to advocate for Rowdy's Corner. Remember, new name, Rowdy's Corner. Um, it'll be on the 29th again at 5 or 6 p.m. They're still working out a time, and it'll be a grand opening, like a grand reopening type event. Really good moment for us to advocate for the food pantry, and Miguel was like, you know, welcoming us with open arms to go go there and speak. Um, and so I encourage everyone who, who can to take that opportunity. I'm going to be doing it. Um, and so there's that. And then just quickly, I wanted to, um, you know, speak from the heart a little bit. And, uh, you know, I haven't pre-written anything like I have with some of my previous statements. But I want to remind everyone that as students, we have tremendous power, more than we are made to realize on the day to day. You know, we're part and parcel of why this institution is able to run. And as elected students representatives here, we uh, like counselors, we have even m more power and it's important that we use it. Um, and so I just encourage everyone to, um, you know, I, there's a lot of good counselors taking initiative and in writing resolutions, bringing them to the floor, making their voices heard in discussion. And I want to encourage everyone to do that because that is really how we exercise that power in this room is by, you know, bringing stuff to the table, bringing your voice to the table. And for those of you that have done it and continue to do it, I, um, you know, keep it up, keep up the good stuff. Um, and then otherwise, I'll, I'll just end it. And I wanted to enter into the, um, the record. I'll just sort of the chat my previous opening statement that I, you know, uh, that I that I think, you know, over the chat, there was some talk about abuse of power, opening statements being an abuse of power. And um, I just want to enter my previous statement into you know, folks can reflect on it and determine for themselves if they think it's a particularly abusive uh, speech. But that's everything I have. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. On to approval of the agenda. So the agenda was set out yesterday, so I'm, hopefully everybody's had a chance to see that and overview it, uh, review it. So we'll move to approve the agenda. Does anybody have any? Uh, I saw your hand. Alice, what do you have? I would like to add the amendment that I've written for uh, representation of homelessness awareness week to the agenda. It's going to just basically just the green flag somewhere okay. on campus. All right. Um, awesome. We'll add that as F. I also just want a quick quick reminder that there is a sheet in the chat that Kenny puts out to request agenda items beforehand. Just to remind everybody. I want to second the alteration on that. James. Oh. We should, we should. Uh, I would like to. Is anyone opposed to adding that to the uh, agenda? Okay, so Alex's resolution. Alex's resolution is added to F of new business. James. I would like to swap item B and D to allow Chad to get his proposal off the floor first before I go with my amendment. Is there a sec? I second that. Okay, so so. So anybody opposed to swapping B for D in new business for section four of the agenda? All right, it's been swapped, hearing none. And I see one more hand, Mike. Um, so I would like to table um, section C of uh, new business, the my amendment proposal to, um, this is amendment to constitute a mandate for food panels. I would like to um, table that to next week. So so I'm just withdrawing my, withdrawing it. So I don't believe withdrawing it. it. Okay, and then you'll, so, um, You'll make sure it gets on that sheet for Kenny for next week. Thank you. All right, thank you. That's been withdrawn. Second, Second that anyone opposed to not speaking on that on mics today. OK. All right, so on to. So with the agenda changes, anybody opposed to approval of those agenda? All right, hearing none. Governing Documents Committee, Paul, you have the floor. Thank you. We had a very lively Governing Documents Committee meeting today. We rediscussed a lot of what we'll have on the on in the new business, um, and uh, yeah, a lot of good conversations. I want to just encourage folks to um, 
you know, join, join in on those meetings if you have time or if you have a lot of thoughts on um, these excellent uh, additions that James has been proposing. Um, you know, we can, you know, the governing documents committee is a, is a natural home for that kind of collaboration and work. And I also want to repeat a, um, an ask here. And I really do mean this. I, if folks are working on amendments to the governing documents, it should be going, it, this collaboration should be taking place within the governing documents committee, not to, not to take place at the very end, um, or in the final hour, we, um, we're not collaborating if we're doing that. And so there's there's still a lot of that going on in the governing documents committee. It's hard to chair a committee where the work's not being done in a space that I can help facilitate. Um, and so it's it's uh, just a challenge we're having. And so just a reminder for everyone, if you have stuff and you're working on it in the governing documents, send it to our chat as soon as you possibly can so that we can get everyone's voice on it and we can come up with a better just because you know the end the end product will no doubt improve through collaboration, I think. Um, and yeah, that's everything I have for the most part. James, I see a hand. Yeah, as a member of the Governing Documents Committee and reviewing the Constitution, I am asking or I am motioning to officially strike co-chair announcements slash opening statements from the agenda as it is an unconstitutional use of power uh, via Article 2, Section 1, Clause 2 of the Constitution, where the chairs who have no additional power but those necessary to facilitate the meetings I do not believe opening statements or any sort of announcement is necessary to facilitate a meeting. Is this what you're proposing here in the agenda? Like, is this the That's a motion? Always oh, motioning right now. Oh, That's is there a second? Second. Anybody? So let's discuss this with the uh, somebody opposition to to the striking of that going first. But left. Anybody? Floor is anybody's to discuss. Alan, is that your hand? Yes, sir. It's your floor, buddy. All right, thank you. Um, I just think this is silly. Uh, it's a step backwards um, from everything we've been working on, and I don't see that we have so much power in the first place, even based on what Paul was just saying, that it's going to hurt anybody or it's some kind of unconstitutional balance of power problem when someone says a few words and encouraging a, uh, of encouragement in front of a meeting. I think it's good for team leadership and it's helps us come together as a team. I don't see the, I don't see it. I don't see the imbalance of power that you're talking about and referring to. And I think it's really petty and it's bringing us backwards. Um, I know what other people have said about me saying it's petty, but um, I, I really do feel like it's so immature for us not to be able to handle a few words and anybody can run for co-chair. We elect them and they do so much extra work. I just don't see the problem in allowing them to say a few words. And I have disagreements with Paul all the time, uh, severe disagreements, but I still agree with his ability to, or Dan, or anybody else who's elected co-chair, including um, James or Chad or anyone else, or Stephanie, to say a few words as you uh, have the opportunity at the beginning of a meeting. It never takes more than 30 seconds or a minute. And um, I'm, I'm really just defending other people's ability to speak and our as a group encouraging us to have some common sense and i've compromised with everybody in here even if i hold very uncompromising positions on votes i'm the only one in here who's ever voted against the group it seems like everybody's always voting for everything and it's really hard to stand up in a group of people especially if they disagree with you and it's changed my life being on the council and um what this has to do with this particular amendment is that um i would defend anybody's right who is a co-chair to say a few kind words at the beginning of a meeting. I just don't see the problem with it. I think I would encourage anybody in here, if you have a problem with the debate or you don't want to um, feel really comfortable with this, don't 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 be afraid to abstain or vote no on this. Um, I don't see the point, and that's all I have to say about it. So continue with opposition. Is there anyone that still has opposition? Taylor. Okay, so my um, my whole thing is that this is a flattened flattened government or a flattened structure. So no one's supposed to have like any more power than anyone else. I'm not. No one's saying that anyone's abusing their powers. This is just a power that the co-chairs currently are taking. In my perspective, I think 
the co-chairs, they do have a lot of important announcements because they are the point of contact for a lot of things. So I think it should be a similar format to the advisor updates. So it should just be at a different place on the agenda where it's just oriented on giving an update. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Uh, so I am in opposition to this change in part because I believe it to be a waste of this body's time. I think that we have students that I mean, we all know that there's bigger fish to fry than, you know, um, striking down opening statements and furthermore opening statements that have not abused anybody. Um, and, you know, the notion that, you know, anybody doesn't have ample space in these meetings to make their opinions or their positions or their stances known is a false one. Um, we all have this truly is a shared governance in which we can all bring resolutions to the table. We can all bring agenda items to the table. We can all equally participate in discussion um, like we're having here, you know, opposition, you know, people supporting it. We can have this out, you know, um, but the thing I think, you know, when we open this up to like, a, you know, everybody gets a minute or 45 seconds to make an announcement, we, we automatically put 12 minutes at the beginning of each of our meetings, right? And um, it seems to me just like a problem that nobody has asked us to fix as student advocacy counselors. Um, I got students coming to me with problems about CIGI's hub still, um, with food insecurity issues. And it's just, even if we spend, you know, 10 more minutes on this, I feel like it'll be 10 minutes squandered on, on stuff that's really small and uh, would really only serve to, um, seems to me a reaction to, to me taking the opportunity to speak. But I just wanna encourage folks who feel like they haven't had equal opportunity to speak to take it because it's there, it's, it's here in discussion, it's, it's in the agenda when you can help make the agenda in adding items, and it's, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, it's whole meeting, right? No one's, no one's silencing anybody, but this move to make it 45 seconds per counselor is, this is a hampering of speech that um, puts undue restrictions on it that nobody's okay, asked for. Clarification, we were discussing a resolution that has not been introduced. There's we're still an, we're discussing the motion. I'm motioning to officially get rid of it, not to change the reformation of it. You are talking about something completely irrelevant. So hold, hold the phone. We had a motion seconded, right? Someone seconded that motion, right? It was heard. We've already had three people discuss it. This seems to me an inappropriate time to claim that the that the motion is something other than it was introduced. You're talking about a resolution I have yet to introduce to the full council. And it's it's. It's frustrating to be interrupted while I'm speaking in opposition to, 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 the, to, the, to the motion that you had raised. Like you have time in this discussion to speak in support of it, you know, and this like a kind of point of clarification would have, I think, been in order, you know, before we heard the very first comment about this motion, it could have been clarified. Um, I clarified it as you're talking about it because it is irrelevant it, to the current discussion. We're, we're just totally falling out of order at this point because no one's being called on to speak. I was called on to speak. I had the floor, and it's a total disrespect of the way in which we do conduct shared governance to cut people off like we're doing just now. So, Paul, right? then I, James, finish Paul. Yeah, uh, I, I just think there are much better things we could be spending our time on, guys. And I don't think this is a problem that needs fixing. Um, I just think it's about all of us taking and taking that power that we already have and using it. So, James. Okay, first things. For support, the Constitution does not delegate the power or any structure of opening statements. Second, the copy of Rusty's rule that you gave me is also not mentioned anywhere in there that chairs get opening statements. It does mention good and welfare, which allows uh, counselors or anyone on a meeting to speak their mind freely. We do not have anything like that currently. Reminder, address the chair. He'll be the co-chair during this meeting so we can address the chair so that there's no personal attack. Thank you, counselors. No, I'm just reminding everybody. The opposition is going first. Okay, keep going. If you have some more, James. And thirdly, as I said, Paul, you bring up a point of a resolution that has not been introduced. I am bringing up a motion to officially take out opening statements from our agendas in total, not to change it. The difference between a motion and a resolution is a very slim one. A resolution is just a written motion. Thank you for that. Mike. Um, 
I do, I mean, I do fall on the side that I do kind of agree that it should be changed generally. I do disagree with the notion that putting like, I mean, putting like a place for us to make announcements in the openings, like I, I could see a situation in the future saying that this replaces like with announcements. I disagree with that motion that it's like wasting 12 minutes of our time. I don't agree with that at all. Um, that's generally at the site, generally on topic, but. So I, currently there's been counselors that came up to ask for a, an announcement and there was not even a thing, you know, the, the, any counselor can make an announcement at the beginning. Mike has made an announcement prior, so there's no need for that. Oh, Alex, did you have your hand up? Um, I, I, uh, I, I guess that's sort of my thing is that if, if any counselor wants to have an opening statement, it's already written that they can do that. This feels like a very circular argument. Thank you for that, um, James. Can you show me where it's written? Because there's literally no opening statement in any of our governing documents. So if you can show me, I will repeal this. But as of right now, there is no written form of how this structure works, which is what I've been writing. But I thought we were striking it. Oh, OK. OK. Stephanie. Yeah, sorry. Can someone just answer my question? Um, are we are we still in the opposition or where are we? <laughs> just talk. You've been called on. Sorry, can you not hear me? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Uh, you have the floor. Oh, I was just wondering if we're still on the opposition or not. I'm a little confused on where we are at right now on the motion on the floor. So the floor right now, the motion is to opened up to speak. I think the opposition has spoken on this. Um, so the floor is open for whoever to speak on that now, Stephanie. Oh, OK, please. no worries. Thank you. That was my only question. Um, I'd like to make a motion to end debate and vote on this. Anybody opposed? Oh, wait. Second, do I have a second? Second that. Chair recognizes the, sec the, the motion in the second. Is there any opposition to ending debate? Paul? Uh, I believe, um, you know, rushing this question and this change will take 12 minutes. The 12 minutes that we added to public comment in our very first resolution will be will be taken and it'll it'll that's what this will cost us at this point. Um, and I know, you know, honestly, also, this is just um, this is, you know, and this is a, an attack on free speech at the end of the day. Um, you know, it might sound dramatic, but people should be able to speak their minds um, and you know, we're not doing anything uncouth when we do that at the beginning of a meeting. Okay. Gabe, go ahead and speak. Awesome. Can y'all hear me? Can yes. Hear me? Yes. yes. Beautiful. All I got to say is I'm just so confused because I feel like. Personally, I feel like this is getting to a whole new other level of like personal attacks or like feeling that people are getting personal attacks or whatever. I'm just really confused on what is going on, y'all. Because I thought that Chad was just talking about like co-chair statements and like general, you know, I didn't think it was a personal attack to anybody. I just gotta say, I'm just really confused on what it all is going on like right now, you know, but that's just like me. But I'm all for any discussion going to vote on this because I'm just so confused, but yeah. Thank you, Gabe. Stephanie? Yeah, I would just like to echo that. Um, I didn't view this as like a personal attack. Um, if it was, then I guess I'm not in support of personal attacks. I just thought that this was directed like in general at just opening statements or like rearranging our wording or being more mindful of wording and maybe just making it opening statements instead of just granting the luxury um just to the coaches at the beginning of every meeting and maybe just opening it up to everyone and if um it just so happens to be the coaches that want to make an opening statement every meeting then so be it um but that was kind of my interpretation of this at the very beginning um i would also like if james could you go ahead and write your motion in the chat because I feel like there was a little bit of miscommunication or misunderstanding with the original motion on the floor. Um, or at least, I guess, maybe I'm a little confused with the original motion on the floor. So if you could go ahead and write that in the chat just so then I could be clear on what I'm going to be voting on, that would be great. I'm doing that right now, Steph. Thanks. All right. 
can we vote on ending debate now? Call the question. Thank you, Mike. Oh, Alan, go ahead. I I uh, want to just say one more thing. I, I don't know why, but I really feel like I would stand up for anybody on this board. I, I don't care who it is. It could be anyone if they were in the same position and they wanted to say a few words at the beginning of a meeting. And I, I've never seen either one of our chairs during the summer or during the school year uh, refuse any, but they've given up their chance for anybody in the home room to speak. So this, I can't over iterate how much this is a non-issue. It, I'm, I'm really in agreement with Stephanie. It's confusing. It's, uh, it, it's, doesn't make sense the level that it's on right now. And the reason that I'm making a big deal out of it is I do feel like it's kind of a form of bullying, uh, using like legislative bullying almost to shut down the speech of somebody when the co-chairs have the ability to speak, but they're also very willing to give it up any week. And if I mean it would we would be doing all of ourselves a big favor right now, a big plus if we could just uh really think about this. If if we tabled it for a week or two weeks, it's not a rush and we don't have to get so emotional about it. Uh, we can talk about it, debate about it in the office and, you know, really do the right by the people and still have shared government governance. A few 30 second statements that people are willing to give up to anybody on the whole entire council isn't going to wreck our shared governance. Point of order. OK. OK. I thought we were voting to end debates. I thought that's what, what this is. Yeah, I thought the question was called. Okay. We can His voice debate. matters just as much as yours, Mike. Yes, but are we voting? Then we're going to vote. We can, we can end debate. It's fine. <laughs> Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Mike. Called the question. All right. Alan. What am I exactly voting on? The amendment itself or the uh, amendment to end no. debate? <laughs> to, end, to end debate. Yes. Alex. Yes. Chad. Yes. Gabe. Yes. James. Yes. Mike. Yes. Spicy. Yes. Uh, Naomi. Yes. Yes. Paul. Yes. Three. Stephanie. Yes. How about Taylor? Yes. I vote no. I'm willing to debate more. Thank you. The resolution or whatever we just voted on passes to end debate. Thank you. So now call the question. Call the question on the striking of opening statements from the agenda. So the strike to co-chair opening statements, co-chair announcements from the agenda. OK. Alan. Nay, absolutely. Alex. Nay. Chad. Yes. Gabe. Yes. James. Yes. Mike. Yes. Naomi. Paul. No. Bree. No. Stephanie. Yes. Taylor. I'm going to abstain. And I vote no. Let's tally these up. Motion passes. Thanks, Council. So back to the announcements. Stephanie, say cab. 
so I was unable to attend our meeting this morning just because I had <clears throat> a doctor's appointment. Um, so I'll go ahead and yield my time to Mike. Mike, do you have any statements from SACAB? I do I have quite a few actually. Um, <clears throat> so um, first and foremost, um, we have completed the bylaws um, rewrite for SACAB. Um, thank you. Um, that took a while. Um, They're going to be finalized next week and then voted on the following week. And then my goal is to get this to this council to be ratified or like vote to endorsed by the end of the semester. Um, and it's very good. One thing I want to note, we have added a policy committee to SACAB, which is a committee that overviews all of AHEX policies. That is a mandatory mandatory committee that's going to be in the um, bylaws. And um, I'm very excited for that. Next, um, Lulu Lancey, um, she is the chief activation officer of AHEX. She came in today and spoke on her role and her kind of future for the campus. Um, we had some good conversations there. Um, I'm moving on for the sake of time. Um, we are going to have ASCP come in and um, we're looking to endorse and or um, give a good portion of our idea fund budget to fund one of their projects. I believe the one they want to do with us is to replace the light bulbs in um, most of the buildings. <laughs> so I'm excited about that. Um, and then lastly, elections. Um, SACAB wants to host a tri-institutional elections. And what that would look like is having basically where the voting booths are right now, having them um, for SGA elections. So like having that space used for SGA elections. So um, yes, SACAB is doing a lot right now and I'm excited to, I'm excited to be on it, so. Thanks, Mike. Gabe, you have the floor for Board of Trustee updates. Awesome, thank you. Um, so for the Board of Trustees, I have no update. No update, no update. Y'all can move along, thank you. Thank you. Chad, Public Relations Committee. Um, nothing new in the Public Relations Committee uh, that, that the only new things will be addressed with resolutions in new business. You say, say that last sentence you said again, you said it'll only be addressed via. I said the new the new items for public relations will be addressed in new business with resolutions. Got it, thank you. So CSG representatives have not met. That'll be within the next week or two and then update will come to the council at large as that happens. Uh, Policy Advisory Committee, Reed. The committee meeting was canceled this last week because senior leadership is still discussing the university closure policy that's not been finalized. Mike, T, uh, the budget, the budget committee. Um, budget committee, um, I has not met. Um, I have no updates. No. Sounds good. Faculty uh, Student Affairs Committee. Three, and then Naomi, if you have anything to add. We have a meeting coming up on Friday, November 18th that Will is going to attend and talk about the things that he spoke with our group about, about the common hour. Um, Emily is going to also attend to talk about um, the results of a survey about course materials costs and how we can work on that as a committee and support Emily. And um, they are also looking a, a, for a report from us, TSAC. So if we have anything, like I've said before, that we you would like Naomi or myself to present or the faculty um, affairs committee through this, Please let me know. We meet next a week. No, we meet, meet on the 18th. Sorry, that's a ways away. Thank you, Ree. Naomi, do you have anything? Uh, no, it's the same thing. Uh, I'm just, like I said, just kind of waiting around. Thank you, Ree. Thanks, Naomi. Thank you, Ree. Uh, sustainability Committee. Taylor. Wonderful. Um, Alex and I are planning on meeting with ASCP after this meeting. Um, I just downloaded the Share Meals app, so if y'all don't have that yet, you should get it. CCD is giving away some free food today in room 346, so go there after the meeting. Um, and Alex has a really cool resolution. And then Alex. I was going to say. That you have a really cool resolution? Okay, yeah, okay. Cool. Awesome, looking forward to it. COVID Response Committee. Alan, do you have anything? Yes, sir. We met on Tuesday. Um, really, uh, I'm going to just, I posted the document um, up on 
at the if you look at the very beginning of the chat right when the meeting opens so you can read it i don't have to read it word for word but basically just want to remind everybody that testing and vaccination is still available at the uh healthcare center um i could read this whole thing i just don't see the use if everybody else can read it itself basically um the basic things about covid 19 or omicron ba5 still dominates in the us but there's the emergence of two new subvariants, BA5, which is 76% of the people uh, tested have it, BA4, BQ1, BF. So there's four or five different variants. Um, no increase in severity, but tre treatments and modalities are working. Uh, Denver County remains in low risk category for community infection. So currently the infection rate is 100,000 uh, for 100,000 people for is 83.3 people. So. Um, um, the hospitals are doing okay, uh, monitoring and handling the volume of people that are coming in with COVID. So if, if you, uh, just a reminder, I, I stayed home in quarantine today or last week because I had a cough. I didn't have COVID, but nonetheless, I decided to quarantine and that's really what the university would like. If, if you have some cold and flu symptoms, just stay home. It's okay. Email your professors and that's all I have to say. Thank you, Alan or anything. Re Student Travel Committee, you have an update. We didn't have any presentations this week except to discuss one from the past, as you know. So no update. Thank you so much. The committee's doing great things. Um, Re, or excuse me, Naomi, Indigenous Student Resource Committee. Can you guys hear me? Oh, we can hear you now. OK, <laughs> um, so far, nothing to update you guys on that you can help with um, right now, but we're going to have another meeting hopefully this weekend and I have I'll have some updates next week. So thank you. Thank you, Naomi. Did anybody else in the committee have anything to add to that? OK. Now, section subsection M. Council goal updates, please. Any councilors have any goal updates they'd like to announce? Ree, I see your hand. Thank you. I met with uh, Megan Conklin, who is the executive director of donor engagement and um, organizations that support our students, and um, had a really good meeting. And she has put me on to Yvonne Smith, who really holds um, control, I suppose, of scholarships that are not possibly being um given forward to graduate students and so um i've sent her um, an email and i hope i get to meet with her soon and i'm also megan encouraged me to see if there was a way and i don't know how we can do this um to communicate with students whether graduate or undergraduate to see about the uptake of scholarships whether it's you know, for grad students or otherwise um to kind of have something to measure uh, to see where the stop gap is, you know, so I don't know, maybe we can put our heads together at some point to think about that, but I will hear from Yvonne about graduates, at least in the short term. Thank you, Ree. Any other counselors have any updates? Taylor. Um, I just wanted to mention from SAB, we had our first meeting today, it was very successful. One thing that I want to make sure everyone on TSEC is aware of, um, when we give our pre when presentations are given in the spring semester, it will need to be one person from TSEC will come, well, it doesn't have to be one person. It can be whoever we want to send to come give the presentation to SAB. Obviously, me and James cannot be part of a presenter, but it can be anyone, however big or small, but you all, we need to pick. But no rush. Thank you, Mike. Just a clarifying question on Taylor. Um, so this is about budget and funding, right? So I mean, not not to put on more stuff of mine, but I mean, as the budget chair, I keep it, try to keep a pretty good track on that. I can try to, or, uh, I just say that I will volunteer to do that. Just let me know when, and I can prepare reports. Awesome. You're, so unless any other counselors have any updates, we oh Gabe. Hi, yeah, so for mine, it's not really like that much about goals update. It's just more of like this section update. I thought like we said we weren't going to do like a full roundabout like 
tabling unless I misinterpreted that. Um, but I thought we weren't. Just a little comment. Uh, go ahead, Chad. So are you referencing opening statements right now? No, like the roundabouts, like the committee roundabouts, you know? Oh, I think we did speak on it. Oh, sorry, Gabe. No, you're good. Yeah, because I thought, like, we spoke on that, like, last week of, like, you know, this is taking too much time. Like, if you have an update, put it in the uh, Google Doc from Kenny. Um, unless I, like, completely misheard that, but I remember it that way. Well, we definitely spoke about it, but nothing official was put in place. Uh, Kenny would be the um is the one who puts out the agenda. So I guess um, this is something that may need to be brought in a resolution. I don't know. We did speak about it, but I didn't ever hear anything official about it. But good, good bringing that to the attention. Um, Gabe, Kenny, go ahead. Hi, Gabe. Yeah, so the only thing official that is out right now would just be the uh, weekly agenda requests. Um, if you want, I could definitely make um, something of the sorts for the committee updates just so we could um, kind of move along this a bit faster. I mean, it's up to like how y'all want. I, I would just, you know, bring it back, bring it, bringing it back up because, you know, it takes, it takes a while to go through these. So just a little, little comment. Um, thank you. Thank you, Gabe. Uh, Re. And sorry if this is out of order to bring up, but, you know, sometimes things come up after the agenda is due and I just thought, either saying pass or maybe if someone remembers something or has something to report that they wouldn't have had by the deadline of the agenda. Oh, for right now in this council goals well, update, that's why it has the word with update. With the boards well, and committees and those kind of things, yeah? Okay, well, that's a good idea. I think that's a good that's time for it. An idea to think about. Appreciate it, Ree. Good idea. All right, any other counselors? Floor is yours. Okay, awesome. Dr. Barone, I hear I see that you have a an update and that you're here. Hi. Hi everyone. Um I just popped in for a little bit just to hear all of the updates and just wanted to let you all know. I'm not sure if Armando is here, but him and I met this week and I just wanted to I guess uh put a plug out there for January. I know that's a little bit off, but I feel like with fall break and Winter break, I, it would be good just to let you all know that him and I had a good conversation about um, having a part two um, type of a retreat um, in January to kind of see where we are and at the middle of the year, check in on the goals um, and kind of plan and strategize for the spring semester. And so uh, if he has not reached out to you already, we will be trying to identify a date for sometime in January. And I just wanted to give you all a heads up about that because I know people have travel plans and probably, I don't know, winterms and classes and things like that. But hoping that we can find a time where we can get the majority of folks together. I think that was really fruitful and helpful for the fall and just hoping we can, we can do that again in the spring. Um, yeah, and I think that's it. That's all I wanted to offer. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Brown. Armando, you have any anything to add? <clears throat> yes, I do have a little bit. Um, let's see. I'll start off with flag reservation. I am finalizing the form now, so that is put in. Hopefully, we're going to shoot for Tuesday. Is that a final date that you wanted, or is it just sometime throughout that week? What are we? I didn't hear what you said. What it's for. So Alex had proposed to me getting a reservation for the lawn to put green flags in representative of students okay. of facing homelessness or hunger? Homelessness. Homelessness. Um, so yeah, is that a final date for Tuesday? Is there an event that we're trying to tie this to or are we just trying to do that? Um, ideally, it would be done during the week of, of homelessness. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Okay. And I checked the weather and, and Tuesday is just going to be the night of nicest weather. Okay, so perfect. That, that so if Tuesday, if anything, they might push us back further, but the reservation is being completed now. Awesome, thank you. Go ahead, Bert. Bert, Bert. Um, I don't know if you all know that for Veterans Day, they're also putting flags out on the lawn next week. Um, is that connected to that, or is that something separate and different? This is separate. separate. So, can you? What is the name of Aha Week? Uh, I believe it is Awareness, uh, Awareness, oh. Homelessness, and Housing. Or oh, wait, no. Auraria. Yes, yeah. Auraria Homelessness and Housing Awareness Week, um, and. I, I feel like if we do flags for both the homeless and veterans, 
that it wouldn't be conflicting. I think it would be complementing. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's fine. I just think that it would be important to coordinate. You know what I mean? Since that's already happening. Um, Armando, when you do that, maybe if, if you don't mind just connecting and giving Joe Foster an FYI, he's the director of the of the of Veterans course. Center, just so he's aware. And that way, you know, if you all are going to do it together in the same places or do it in different places on campus, I don't know. But I do think it would be good to coordinate. Please. Do you know if those flags stay up all week for the veterans? I think they do because Veterans Day, so there's there are a lot of Veterans Day events or veteran just veteran specific activities happening next week. The first is on Monday and we're bringing a big speaker and filmmaker. And then on um, Thursday from 11 to 1, there's a big tri-institutional celebration from 11 to 1 in the turn hall. Um, and then they have some things happening in the Veterans Center as well. So and part of it is like it's a ritual that they go out and put the flags. Okay, sounds good. I would definitely, so yeah, I would you can connect with Dr. Foster. I'd appreciate that. Thank you. No problem. Um, I have started pondering ideas around voter engagement. I attended like a talk from the NACA folks. They hosted like a conversation on just involvement and things like that. So. Um, once that gets up and running, I have a couple ideas for that. Speaking of that, we have zero applications for the elections manager. Um, for the social media post, where are we with that? Or uh, I put out one uh, social media post on all of our social medias. Uh, I plan on putting it out at least three more times. Okay, cool. Um, as y'all mentioned earlier, the launch of the food pantry November 29th. I think Rona and I think it'd be a great fit for you all to be there, be in support. Um, they will definitely reach out for more info. Food for finals is being talked about in the resolution, so that's good. And I just want to make a statement concerning everything that's been going on. I feel like we're going in a cycle again. We're here to advocate together. We may express discourse in our conversations, in our discussions, and we encourage discourse, but this is... I want to say a final reminder that anything targeting anybody, any sly comments, anything being petty, stupid, discouraging, I'm over it. It's petty and it's annoying at this point. So we will be moving forward with an accountability council. The next time someone says something sly, remark because that's it's not for the students and we need to grow up and keep it pushing. Thank you. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you for the updates. On to new business. CR 22-21. Wait, continue. You need to do your don't. Oh. Ignore my gesticulating. Ah, ah. <laughs> okay, so CR 22-21, a resolution to mobilize and fund food for finals. Mike, you have the floor. Thank you. So, um. <laughs> so, yes, um, I have written this resolution with the help of CMEI, um, Larissa, um, so I'm, just gonna, I'm not, it was sent out yesterday, um, I don't feel like I need to read it unless there's any objections, but um, so I spoke intensely with Armando, with Larissa um, Wardlaw, um, she is the events director for CMEI, because um, this is generally a resolution where we're looking to work with them. So um, this is an annual tradition that TSAC, um, or at least SGA of MSU Denver, um, does this so um, I'm looking to pass this without I'm looking to motion to pass this resolution. Would you read it for us? Would you like me to read it? Please. All right. <clears throat> so um, written by so resolution to mobilize and fund for finals um, written by Mike Warner and Chad Goge um, collaborated with Larissa Wardlaw events coordinator for CMI sponsored um, endorsed by James, Dan, and Alex. So <clears throat> we, the members of the student government, um, the Student Advocacy Council, are committed to supporting the annual tradition of the Metropolitan State University of Denver student government by hosting the funding for food for finals. This resolution seeks to allocate $4,000 to $5,000 to acquire food for the week of December. Uh, the intention of this resolution is to nourish MSU Denver students during the week of finals. All right, section one, explanations and definitions. The MCU Denver student government, regardless of the official name, has historically hosted an event named Food for Finals. This event comes at a critical time in every student's life. Finals is a time when 
Many students neglect caring for themselves and solely focus on studies and the upcoming exams. This neglect extends to feeding oneself. SGTSAC will host an event, uh, Food for Finals, that will feed the students of MSU Denver in a manner listed below in the goals. The council will only use approved vendors defined as local businesses in Denver metro area. All right, so um, just some definitions. Um, no, um, goals, section two goals to set up a stationary food final center during the week, the days of December uh, 12th and 13th to use the money allocated to buy local breakfast options from a local restaurant located in Denver to make sure dietary restrictions and preferences are met uh, in parentheses vegan gluten free to work to work with the area sustainability campus program to ensure the event is sustainable and adheres to the guidelines of the green purchasing agreement um, to allow the PR committee to start a camp um, to allow the PR committee to start a campaign to promote the events to allow CMEI and the MSU Denver Care Center uh, to provide logistical help provide the logistical support to collaborate within the um, with the SGA's um, I'm sorry, I'm going to read that. To collaborate with SGAs at UCD and CCD if within our interests and needs. Um, funding, this resolution seeks, Section 3 funding, this resolution seeks to allocate money in the range of $4,000 to $5,000. This money comes out of the um, SGTSAC General SAB fund. Um, the following will be included in this funding proposal. Catering from approved vendors, materials required to advertise, reservation expenses, Equipment required for distribution. And then we're going to go on to section four. Um, a budget spreadsheet. So this is transparency. A budget spreadsheet will documenting all purchases will be provided to the council and will be managed by the budget committee chair. That is me. Um, section five miscellaneous. Any other decisions um, will be left up to the discretion of the budget and PR committee. That is the resolution as it stands. Thanks for reading that, Mike. I'd like to second the resolution. I, I hear the second. Taylor, yes, the floor is yours. Um, so I just I want to know the price. Um, I don't like that there's a range personally, four thousand to five thousand. I think um, this is a proposed amendment. You say five thousand, and anything not used goes back into our budget. So is it, are you you want to make that amendment? Yeah, five thousand. Yeah. Anything else? Is that a is that a friendly amendment, Mike? Sure. Why not? Sure. Why not? Like, why not? Yeah. Five. That, no, this is just for this semester at the moment. Yes, next semester we'll look at it. So well. this is, but yes, this should be sustainable both semesters. This, yeah. Okay. So so that's a friendly amendment. I'll make so that change. So it's not four to five thousand. Now it's five thousand dollars with anything not spent being put back into the budget. Correct. Correct. Okay. So is there a second on? Actually, I don't know. Is there any more discussion? Because you had second. I I I don't know. Wait. Go ahead. So we'll hear opposition first. I want to make sure that you know we don't do that and then sometimes not do that. So is anyone opposed? All right, good. This is food for finals. Really shouldn't be opposed. So I, I guess I'll take a moment then to speak in my support of this. Good job on this, Mike. Um, looks great. And I think this is one of the best things we can do in, in the year and with, with some of what we can do. So I know it can really help the students in a trying time. So good work and I fully support it. Uh, Mike, I have a question about it. Um, to collaborate with SGAs at CC, UCD and CCD, Parenthesis, if within our interest and needs, close parenthesis. What does that parenthesis, what does that mean? Yes, I can take that. So that leaves the option, because this I left this option in this amendment, to work with um, CU Denver and um, CCD. So if we choose to expand this event, um, what I look for that is equal funding from each institution. Generally, that's what I look for that. Um, but um, funding's tight, um, so if they're, it's within our interest. So we, we can choose if we want to or not. Um, if it's not so, then it's just kind of doing our own thing. That's what I put. That's what I put in there for. When you say we can choose, that means you because you're the chair of the committee. No, no, no. This is we as the council. Okay. We as binding to this resolution. So um, it's our choice whether or not um, we choose okay. to work with them or not. I just put an option in there because there is a chance that if. The funding presents itself. We can expand this event much bigger to what we can do feasibly. So, quick follow up on that. Have you? Hold on one second, Gabe. Quick follow up on this exact question. Um, have you reached out to the SGAs at the various schools about this already as potentially an option for for discussion with them? I have. So um, I reached out to Juan, um, a president of CU Denver. He loved the idea. 
cool. funding is tight. So he's going to present it to the set, or I believe Morgan, vice president and president of the Senate, is going to present it to the Senate to see what they can do. Um, it's a coin toss, um, but the options out there. Um, CCD, I in the past has mentioned that their budget is very um, thin, not thin, but like it, tight as well. So, um, but um, they have not responded back to me with any kind of questions. Thanks for the clarification and taking the lead on this, Mike. Uh, Gabe, I see your hand. Awesome. Hello. Cool. So, um. Oh, wait, can't. Oh, hold on. Maybe it's me. Sorry. Sorry, Gabe. Go ahead. Talk again. Hello. Can y'all hear me? Yes. Yes. It was my fault. Okay. Yes. Cool. So now you're good. Um, let's see. I, I'm all for it. I think, you know, like food for finals is always really important stuff. Um, and so like, I, I personally would have liked better to just have, have like more, like, more information, you know, on it and stuff. Um, like I saw like other polls that you sent out in the chat. Um, and so is that poll like a go, like, like the plan or is it more of, of just like gathering, uh, just a gathering interest at that point of like, what do we think would be better? So Gabe, are you asking if the poll was the final thing or was just, just, um, Mike, there was a question asked to you about what's on the table that we're talking about right now. Yes, sorry, my apologies. Can you re-ask that question? Yeah, I Gabe. think what he was asking, were the polls official or were those just you gathering information um, about what we should do to write this resolution? Is that correct, Gabe? So, yes. Uh, uh, kind of. Uh, also, like, oh, uh, were the polls, like, is that, like, the plan that's, like, happening? Like, um, is it going to be uh, uh, the sandwiches? And then um, I don't know, like, what was the results on, like, the location of it? But is that, like, the official plan or is that just, like, gathering interest so um the polls i sent out were um a combination there's lots of different ideas i had talked to many of you guys up uh, planning up to this event like oh what do we think and um those are the ideas um set forth the location the first question on that poll um was an option and so i actually started looking into logistics um to make it mobile make this pantry or make this kind of uh thing mobile is a logistical nightmare it will it requires a lot more manpower a lot more um frankly funding for food that we um that we cannot accomplish and it just we're con the reason we're doing a stationary place is because we're controlling our environment a little bit like um we can add more things we can make it a place where people can sit and take a take a second like take a second themselves eat your eat some food we're thinking of doing some other things other activities um but um that's the poll was just generally get some ideas out there um and uh, see what y'all think so and oh. I, I i took the i took the poll um very seriously when i made this so Okay, awesome. I love that because I agree, you know, with it being in a stationary area because, you know, in addition to, like I said, um, the poll, it's not like people just need a, a space sometimes and stuff. And also it's going to be in December. It's going to be cold and like people actually want to be outside. So I'm really happy that it was moved to a stationary, um, yeah, a stationary format instead of a mobile one. That's all I got to say. Thank you. Thank, uh, thank you. Taylor. I just have a clarifying question. Um, and I guess I think this is coming from a place of ignorance for me. Like, um, would this be helping like CU Denver students too? Because they have a dining hall, correct? So this resolution is um, only for MSU Denver students because um, we are budgeting our own funds out of it. Um, the option in there is to, if like, if, if within our interests to, if we all kind of put in the same money, then we can make this a tri-institutional event. I have no issue with that. The option's in there. Um, but right now, as it sees, it's it's for MSU Denver students. Gabe asked in the chat, you. but we won't turn away students, right? I mean, I don't. I mean, if I'm not going to. Whoever's handing I'm not sandwiches, his choice. It's their choice. My thought was we're just going to have like, hey, sign in with your stuff at the table. But we're, no, I mean, I'm not going to like be the bad guy, like strong arming, like, oh, you can't. I mean, no, I'm not going to be that guy. So but it's not in the resolution. So. so Gabe, to answer that, whoever's handing out the sandwiches, it depends then. Go ahead. So I just want to say um, in reference to turning away students and how it'll kind of be facilitated, I'm planning on doing a campus pulse survey that day. So in order to get the food, they had to fill out a quick survey on how they feel about what's going on with MSU, identify needs, things like that, and get some data. Yes. Ultimately, those who fill out the survey will be MSU students. Yeah. But, you know, if, if a community member or someone else comes up, 
clearly they'll get a sandwich. Absolutely, yeah. Thank you, Armando. Thank you for that. After they failed the survey. Okay. Um. Anybody else? Okay. Call a question. Second. Alan. Yes. Alex. Aye. Chad. Aye. Gabe. Aye. James. Aye. Mike. Yes. Naomi. Paul. Happy to vote yes. Bree. Aye. Stephanie. Yes. Taylor. Yes. Dan. Aye. Good work, Council. The resolution unanimously passes. On to subsection or item B from new business. Oh, wait, no, we removed it. We moved it. Excuse me. Sorry. D funding proposal for Squarespace subscription. Chad, you have the floor. Yes. So one second. One. Cool. So this will be resolution CR 22 19. Um, awesome. So uh, as I spoke last week about the uh, the need for our, our uh, offsite website from the, uh, the campus. The campus website, I drafted this resolution outlining the funds that we need specifically. Um, the funding annually will be uh, 276 annual for the purchase and maintenance of the Squarespace subscription, as well as $20 annually for the purchase and maintenance of the domain MSU Denver student government dot com. Um, and then in this resolution, it also calls on our future council to uh, continue this funding with one of the big points that uh, that will probably raise some questions here being that uh, if there is an increase in the price of main maintaining this uh, website and domain from from the previous year, if that that cost should be more than fifty dollars, the committee responsible for maintaining the website must appeal to the entire council. If it is under fifty dollars, they may appeal to the budget committee. Are there any questions on this resolution? Alan. What's the total cost of it again? Um two hundred and ninety-six dollars. Thank you. Where are we at? Yep, two hundred and ninety-six dollars annually as it stands currently. All right. And what's the current cost of the uh what we're paying for with the MSU right now? Zero dollars. Okay. Gotcha. Thank you. Alex. Um, I, I'm I'm all for this. I just wonder if there's any if there's gonna be any issues with copyright concerning using the logo of MSU uh for an off site website. If that's if that's something that we've already gotten approval for or if that might be an issue in the future. Um as far as I understand it, so long as we don't alter the logo in any way, we are in the clear. And I, the, as it stands now, we will only be using the logo made for student government, the Student Advocacy Council made by Marcom. Right. Yeah, because we're using it for official MSU Denver purposes. And since it's trademark, I think that, that is protected. Correct. And we will also be using um, open source photos as well as photos taken by members of the council so that we avoid copyright in that sense as well. Good question, Alex. Anybody else? So is there a motion on the floor? Yeah, I mean, I would second it. And um, also call the question. I feel like we We've had some good discussion on this. Okay. Um, All right. Anybody opposed to calling this to question? And ending debate. All right. Hearing none. 
So we are voting on this resolution presented to Chad with $296 annually for the square space maintenance and erection of the site. Alan. Yes. Alex. Aye. Chad. Yes. Gabe. Yes. James. Yes. Mike. Yes. Naomi. Yes. Paul. Aye. Bree. Aye. Stephanie. Abstain. Taylor. Yes. Dan. Aye. Thank you, Council. The resolution passes. Good work. Okay, so James, the floor is yours. This is for what was B before the amendment proposal. Hi, everybody. So I have drafted our first amendment for the Constitution, and it is plainly simple and easy, so I will quickly read it for you guys. So Article 1, Section 1 of this amendment is, We, the students of SGTSAC, hereby abolish the communal document effectively and immediately with the passage of this amendment, whereas the communal document is no longer relevant with the ratification of the Constitution. It creates inconsistencies and redundancies within the governing structure of SGTSEC. There is no longer any necessity or reason to maintain it. All right, let's open up the floor. Um, anybody opposed to this here um, among, uh, amendment? Taylor? Not really Those opposed. Are... I just have a something I would like to add to it, but you can deny it if you want to. Um, so in my perspective, the communal document is the foundation, like what TSEC was born from. So I think adding to this would be getting it framed for our office. Do you see that as a friendly amendment, James? So are you asking to frame the communal document? Yeah, setting aside a $25 for a frame. I mean, as far as the frame, I... I see it's a friendly amendment price wise. That's not my field, but I agree with. Thank you, Taylor. Um, anybody else have anything to say about this? Maybe. So that's still like it was a friendly amendment. Sorry, I, my, my attention drifted for two seconds. Yes, good, good. Kyle, could you uh, not Kyle, Kenny? Sorry. Oh, G Gabe says Dollar Tree has good frames. Y'all don't buy a twenty five dollar frame. It is work. Yes, it is. So, Kenny, can you add that uh, friendly amendment into the document? Or Chad. someone else, whoever has it up. Chad. All right. Appreciate y'all. I will add everything in to make it official. Oh, it's only a suggestion version. My apologies. But Taylor, and I, then I guess we'll just be careful to work it in there afterwards. Yeah, um, we're vote, so make sure the council sees the language be, because we are voting on it prior to actually seeing the language in the thing. So it could be like a, a slip of the funny give James all the power type thing. <laughs> so if anyone has any points of clarification to be made about the amendment that was just the friendly amendment that was just made, this is the point where we clarify and make clear what we're um, now discussing and then going to be voting on. Um, and then I'll just encourage we continue the discussion. Stephanie, please, the floor is yours. Okay, there we go. Um, yeah, so I guess it's just we're abolishing it and we're getting a frame, right? That's kind of what's going on? Yes. Okay. Is your hand still up? Are you thinking or was that your, was that your, okay, thank you, Stephanie. I'm going to call the question. I think this is a pretty cut and dry. So, okay, so um, moved. All right, cool. You got a opposed? second. Okay. Alan. Yes. Alex. Aye. Chad. 
Yes. Gabe. Aye. James. Aye. Mike. Yes. Naomi. Yes. Paul. Aye. Bree. Stephanie? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Okay. Um, Dan? Aye. Thank you, Council. The amendment passes. Great work. Thank you, Council. All right. Item E, Alex, the, f the green flag amendment for AHA week. The floor is yours. All right, thank you. OK, so this is the first session of a resolution um, to represent student housing and security. It's written by myself, Taylor and Paul, uh, with the help of the Auraria Sustainability Department, Chad and Dan, um, and then Chad also endorsed it. Uh, the abstract, we the Student Advocacy Council recognize that housing is one of the highest priorities to students for life in general, and this is also outlined in our goals. Uh, MSU has roughly 13% housing and secure students, according to a survey uh, brought by MSU. This could, this could include not having a home, couch surfing, living with rental assistance, and living in a car or other non-suitable environments. Uh, housing insecurity affects people of all identities, and that's from the, the HUD housing of 2020. Uh, whereas in Colorado, and there's also a subscript, so there's like a graph down below. Um, whereas in Colorado, housing remains to be a rising ex uh, expense that many people can't afford. Housing expenses affect college students directly and remains to be one of the many barriers for students to graduate and live in general. Um, and there is an article written in the red, Roadrunner Red article uh, from 2018. Um, and then and then in the United States, housing has decreased. There's another graph below uh, just in just in general for housing uh, in Colorado has housing insecurity has increased. There's three thousand nine hundred eighty nine people in Colorado who are homeless at any given night, roughly twenty two point nine percent. Whereas MSU and the Council will provide information about resources available on and off campus. This includes, but is not limited to, the Care Center on MSU campus located in Tivoli 303, which provides help receiving rental assistance, food assistance, and has an emergency emergency fund for students in difficult financial, financial situations. The Care Center also hosts the Roadrunner Food Pantry, now renamed uh, Rowdy's Corner on campus, which we can provide information about, and the other institutions' food pantries. This includes, but is not limited to, the information on Section 8 housing, metro carrying, HUD housing, and other various types of student housing, SNAP benefits, WIC, and other local, governmental, and institutional support systems. Therefore, be it hereby further resolved, we the Student uh, Council formally recognize that housing is vital to students' graduation and ability to live. This would be time during AHA week, Auraria Homelessness and Housing Awareness Week, and would last for the duration of, such, of the week. Uh, we, the student council, will display the green flags located in our office's storeroom. The flags will be displayed outside in a lawn approved by AHEC. There will be a flag per person who is experiencing these struggles. Uh, we, th therefore, be it hereby further resolved that we, the student council, and MSU Denver will also provide information about where and how to seek support for housing and food insecurity. Thereby, for be hereby further resolved, the flags themselves will not disturb any other events happening on campus and will contribute to the events that are happening on campus. Um, and that's that. I will. There's the there's the sources down below and then the graphs you can check out down below too. So uh, if you want to check that out. Thank you, Alex. You're welcome. Open up the floor. Does anyone have anything to say about this? Taylor. Alex, um, I left a little comment on the document. I was just in one of the therefores. I wanted to know what the scale was. So you say there will be a flag per person who are experiencing these struggles. Um, I want to know like per person who is attending a rare campus at MSU or like in Denver, like what's the scale? 
So this was something I was thinking about just because I know we have a limited number of flags in our office. Um, I, I'm not, I don't know, I'm not sure. Um, I, I feel like it might be beneficial because there is the veterans home awareness that maybe we just do that number for all of Colorado, which is that 3000. Um, if we have enough flags or just use all of the flags that we have. Thank you. The Student Care Center is in Tivoli. Student Care Center, oh, thank you, Matthew. Student Care Center is in Tivoli 311. Okay, well, go ahead, Paul. Uh, I think this is a really good thing to move on, especially being in Colorado in the winter. We know that these winters are brutal. These winters are murderous for folks experiencing housing insecurity. Um, yeah. And so I think the very least we could do is help raise awareness and then some like we can do more after we after we pass this. And I hope we do. Um, and yeah, so fully support it. Um, and I will say, you know, I, I see it says I, I helped write it up there. I helped get some of this research together. And so I would demote myself to collab collaborated with, but I'm happy to be up there at any rate. Thank you. Naomi. Yeah, I just had a quick question. Um, so I think I missed this part. Or maybe I just misunderstood it, but actually it was part. You cut out. Did you change your mind? Oh, OK, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. OK, perfect. So I think I anyway, just, I'd kind of need some clarification. So is this kind of going like, are we just advocating for the student care center and like putting that out there as a resource for students when it comes to homelessness and whatnot? This is a two part question, but I need that part answered first. Um, we'll be we'll be advocating um, all any resources that are available for housing and security that would include what's on campus um, and then at the state level and federal level. OK, sweet. So I just kind of want to put that out there that a lot of students know about the care center and I learned about this, especially with the Native Indigenous Peoples Grant that the reason why students go, do not go to the care center or don't utilize it is because it's a very invasive process. So they want to know like absolutely everything about you, every piece of personal information, which personally I understand because like you can't just have money handed out to you, you know what I mean? Um, but at the same time, like I do understand that that is like a lot of your privacy being given up and that requires you to be very vulnerable. And I think that like maybe instead of, we should also advocate for like, maybe having a counselor go with you or maybe, um, you know, just giving them support that like showing them it's okay to be vulnerable. Like your pride shouldn't hold you back from, you know, getting access to these resources, even if you do have to go through a very invasive process. Um, so I just think that maybe we could also advertise that as well as like, they don't have to go alone um, or we could find them like somebody to provide them like just reassurance or comfort that like they're doing the right things for themselves and that it's not, um, you know, like they don't have to feel ashamed of having to go get this help, if that makes sense. Um, I don't know if that would be considered like an amendment or just tell me what you guys' thoughts are on that if if you have any, but I just wanted to put that information out there for you guys. That's, thank you, Naomi, for that. Yeah, I think a lot of this is raising awareness and maybe there could be some sort from the PR committee or somebody doing some sort of pamphlets or something that says, hey, here's all the resources on campus. And oh yeah, by the way, there's support. You don't have to go alone. You can, it's okay to be vulnerable. You've got people on your side to fight and advocate for you. I think that would be solid. I'm not certain that necessarily needs to be an amendment in this document, but obviously I didn't write the document. So anybody else have anything further on that? Yeah, Paul. It's a bit of a direct response. I understand where you're coming from with some of the uh, talk of like invasiveness and, and how it can, you know, but honestly, as someone who's been to the care center personally, um, I, I had a really, I think I had a really good experience and um, I, I, I did feel that, that I felt the care in care center while I was, while I was there. Um, I had a really stressful debate that just almost broke me as a speech and debate one time and the folks in the care center really helped me get back on track and like ground myself a bit more. And I, and I, and I want to say that, you know, especially when you think about what they, what exactly they're dealing with in a lot of cases, it's ideal that we, um, you know, encourage that folks do utilize that resource because we're talking about like, you know, amongst some of the things they do, I think is like suicide prevention and um, like advocacy for folks with mental health, um, you know, mental health difficulties. And so I want to still encourage folks that the care center is still a good place to go if you need help. 
Um, I'll, real fast, I'll call everybody else, but I do see a member of the public have their hand raised. We'll we'll save that member of the public time to speak during public comment coming up here at the end of this um, for that. So if I don't call on you, don't be offended there. Um, hold on, I'm trying to see who we have. Uh, Naomi, did you have a follow up on that? Because it looked like your hand was still up, or is that the same hand? No, 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 it's the new hand. Um, so, Paul, I think that's amazing that you were able to get the help that you, um, you know, required. And I'm like super thankful for that. Um, but we also have to take into consideration the other um, and especially BIPOC individuals who have gone through the care center and not got the help that they needed or deserved. Um, and we can sit here and say that racism isn't alive and well, but it truly is. I mean, y'all notice right off the hand, if you guys any watch the NPR, the Solution Studios, Joe O'Day said in front of two DACA students talking about building a wall. So, I mean we got to take into consideration that we don't always understand what happens in these interpersonal relationships when it comes to the CARES team taking care of our students. But I've been told multiple times that our faculty and staff do still exhibit racist behavior. And it can be hard to advocate for those things when we don't know what goes on behind closed doors. So sometimes we have to give that reassurance. And that's why I was telling you that maybe we need to provide them with that buddy system of like, you don't have to go alone. Like, I'm going to make sure these people give you what you deserve and what you need. And it's going to be a lengthy process, but like you have someone here to support you. So just keep that in mind when you're thinking about it, because not everyone's experience is the same. So we're not, you're not saying that to not send them there. It's just, the, just to maybe have a buddy as an option. Okay. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because it's still All a right. useful resource. You know, okay, you yep. Thank know. you. Yeah. Um, Alan? Yes, sir. Um, I agree if someone feels uncomfortable. I don't think anybody in the care center would ever dissuade somebody from bringing a friend in um, or a, somebody they felt comfortable with, an advocate with them into the care center. Um, I know I'm white and you guys might not like me here, but uh, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the care center. And I've always advocated for the care center in many, many big ways. Um, I'm kind of shocked that anybody would feel uncomfortable because I've always been made to feel been made to feel so comfortable when I go in there. And uh, again, I've had so many problems with uh, housing insecurity, food insecurity, everything you could imagine over the last couple of years. And I'm finally a senior, and now I get the feeling that you know MSU really wants me to graduate. And part of that, a huge part of that, is the care center. Um, I I think that the people in there, the the care center itself is so diverse. That's what makes me hard to believe that anybody from any different background would have a problem because I don't think I've ever been in a place in MSU that so has such diversity in the staffing and they're so kind when you do approach them. So I, I completely back this um, 100%. Thank you, Alan. I, Alex, and then Gabe. Okay, cool. Thank you. So I'm going to take this from the top. Um, no, no, no. I'm just. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna address. I'm addressing everything that's been given to me so far. Um, okay, so I did change this to represent housing insecurity, um, and I made a specific amount for the three thousand nine eight nine, uh, depending on if we have an, if we have enough flags. Um, and then I changed the Tivoli three eleven. I changed the Rowdy's Corner, and I changed the thing that Naomi was talking about. So. Underneath the benefits I put, we will provide marketing material for people to use at their own discretion and a council member may also accompany any said persons uh, to the should, and I can put like to the care center in agree in an agreed upon manner. OK, it's by both parties, right? Just so yeah. that there's no weird. Thing. OK, so and, and, we'll and uh, agreed. Awesome. Thank you so much, Alex. Yeah, Gabe. Awesome. Um, all I have to say um, is I just really appreciate um, what Naomi said and brought up and stuff um, because coming from a person of color uh, myself, um, I do think that it is that there are discrepancies um, and stuff just between not, I'm not saying that it's like an MSU problem, but I'm saying, you know, that there's still bugs in the system overall that are creating um these barriers and stuff and so just because i'm just saying you know if your experience was is different wonderful but keep in mind that experiences are still very different um between you know poc and white people like that's just the reality of it um so yeah that's all i had to say on that but again thank you naomi for really 
saying wording it a lot better than I could have. Thank you, Gabe and Naomi, for bringing that to the table. Alan, is that a new hand? No, that's not a new hand. Sorry, I'll take it down. All right, thank you. All right. Any further? Alex, of course. I like I like all of this input. This is all really good input. Thank you so much. Um, and, and like if anyone else has anything else they want to add to this or they have anything they want to say, any concerns or questions, please let me know because you know we we're, we're here together. Here's my question. Why don't we call the question? No, I'm just kidding. No, I, I would motion to call the question That's and, and debate. So we have a second. All right, chair recognizes the call the the, mo the the first and the second. All right. On we go. Alan. Yes. <laughs> Alex. Yeah. Ch Chad. Yes. Gabe. Yes. James. Yes. Mike. Yes. Naomi. Yes. Paul. Yes. Free. Yes. Oh, I. <laughs> Stephanie. Yes. Taylor. Yes. Dan. I. Thank you, Council. Resolution unanimously passes. All right. At this time for our agenda. If any members of the public are here, I believe there might be one. Just throw your name in the chat and the floor is yours. Thank you for coming if you're here. The floor is yours. Yeah, thank you. Um, so actually, I wanted to validate Naomi's point. Um, I am actually an employee of the Student Care Center. Um, I work in the HOPES program as a peer mentor. Um, we work with students around government assistance programs. And I have heard definite complaints, especially in regards to the Indigenous Peoples grant and the reaction to that. that especially the um, emergency relief grant is can be very intrusive. Um, but I don't think that's as much of personally. Uh, I don't feel like that's as much as staff as some of the um, policies and procedures that are in place that cause those barriers. Um, and I would definitely encourage any students who want to bring a second person as support, any counselors, any staff or anything, they're more than welcome to come in with the students and advocate with them. Thank you. Thank you. Any, any other members of the public um, have any comment? Naomi, this is not for public comment. This is to address your um, motion that you or the question you asked in the chat. So the floor is yours there. OK, sweet. Um, yeah, I just uh, wanted to make a motion to um, create an accountability committee. I second. I'd second the motion. So OK, the chair recognizes Naomi's motion to create an accountability committee and the second of that motion create wait, wait hold on a second we didn't even know who the accountability is accountability committee oh okay so then i guess we're going to vote on the accountability committee wait are we going to actually name a chair so what is the i figured the way we should the way we should continue with this motion just for a procedural thing folks 
is the motion has been made to create an accountability committee, right? And now um, is is uh, is anyone opposed? Right. It was seconded. Right. And now we can move into some discussion about what exactly that's going to look like. I figured, right? Sorry. Yeah, we did. And so this is in line with the resolution that was that we passed. I see a few hands up, so let's let's get to the hands. Um, and yeah, so we I like and like Dan's saying, we kind of want to know what this is for before we vote on it. So let's iron that out and we'll go through the hands here. Gabe. Awesome, thank you, thank you. Um, so just two quick things. One um, is based, um, so the, I have the, resol the resolution up and the re resolution states that we have to appoint a chair as a council. So if the, just like if the accountability for committee is formed, um, just keep in mind that we would have to appoint a chair um, as well. Just wanted to like, you know, bring that up real quick. And then also, um, I, I, I'll just leave, mm, I'll leave it up uh, to Naomi to clarify their motion on on what question was asked of why, but um, yeah. Yeah, so my my thing about it is if we're opening up for discussion, I'd just like to know, oh, sorry, uh, uh, Stephanie's number, Alan, look, oh, Stephanie, and then Alan. Thanks. Um, yeah, I would just like to know, I guess this is kind of, I guess, a personal uh, thing. I would like to know what the accountability committee is being created for before I vote on it, just because I'm not sure why we're creating it. Um, I'm all for it. I just want to know, like, what we're creating it for. That would be great. Naomi. Do you want to have a response? Oh, yeah, I'm going to get to Alan, but I was going to see if Naomi was going to be able to answer the questions that are being draw, brought forth upon her motion that she she brought to the floor. Yeah, yeah, if you guys want, I can real quick. Um, so I think this is just going to be like um, an accountabil accountability committee that's more or less based around, um, I'm assuming members within TSEC just holding us up to like what we say we're going to do kind of thing. I'm not really sure. Um, honestly, this is going to be this is more of like why uh, Paul wanted to put it up for discussion. So I think that like maybe we should get through Alan's comment and then we should motion to um, fulfill what Paul was trying to do and just have a discussion about it so we can see what we want from this and how we can make it happen. You know what I mean? So because we want input from all you guys, you know what I mean? And we want to see who wants to be chair of it so on and so forth. Um, I won't personally be on the committee, but I think that the committee should be there. Um, so like I said, I'd like these all, I think you should, you guys should keep these um, questions um, on, on the table for right now um, because they will be answered once we start the discussion about the accountability committee. And I think those will be answered once we start the discussion about it and let Paul take the floor. Wait, so you're saying once we vote to have the accountability, then questions are gonna be answered? Um, no, I well, like whatever way Paul said the order should go, oh, I think that would have been fine. I see. Um, but like, and like I said, the committee, no one has to be on the committee. It can be just one person, two no, people, just like, to, whatever the requirements, but yeah. I was just trying to see what you said. Okay, Alan. Um, I just have a lot of questions about what the accountability is about. <laughs> you know, what what is this? And uh, I think we could handle it in the background if we tabled it for a week even too it's not like we are in a huge hurry to do this is that correct naomi i mean are you in a hurry to do this now this week are we going to vote on this or is this something that we can talk about and uh have civil discussion about and discourse and come to agreement with in the background and then come bring this forth as a uh, something we can vote on in a couple of weeks Hello. <laughs> we can hear you, Alan. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not hearing a second. That is a question. I, I, I don't really understand what this is. It's a lot. There's a lot of their force in here, and uh, I'd like to just clarify a lot of this. Well, you, you, oh, the accountability committee. We already passed yeah. this, and so, um, but let's continue okay. with the discussion. Stephanie, you have the floor. <laughs> Also, I guess, yeah, I'm a little confused. Um, I didn't know it even passed. Um, I guess my interpretation of the whole accountability committee thing was like, you kind of state why we're creating it. So then we could then like agree if we want to 
create a committee about it. Am I wrong? I'm for oh, it. Right. I just don't know what's going on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I might be I'm able to help clarify. The Very hey, Alan, Alan, let's keep the stack, man. You'll, you'll get a, you'll get a chance. We'll make sure you do. Um, but I, I feel like we're just going around this point of clarification. And I really, what I'm gathering here is that, you know, what we heard during our advisor updates, that if, you know, if there was like one more, you know, I don't know the right word here, but like comment unbefitting of the, of the respect that we all are due each other, just as, just as colleagues and peers on this council, you know, it was my understanding that, you know, there's a, it was like, not even, it didn't even sound like a suggestion, but like a, you know, then that's when we'll have to form an accountability committee. And then it happened like three, four or five times in the chat today. So this is, I like, that's what I thought um, this was about. You know, I'm not sure, but that's what I thought. I'll just say, Alan, I think they're erecting an accountability committee on you is what it boils down to, I think is what's happening. I think that's what I get from it now. Um, so a motion may be made to create a committee to mediate and determine a resolution to address of the question. So I think that's what it boils down to. That's the clarification you gave. Okay, I think Dan like did what I was gonna do of like let's stop being like let's stop being around the bush, let's stop sugarcoating. Yeah, let's like let let's go. You know, like let's say what we're here to say because it's yes. all like oh well maybe no. Um, yeah, that's what I thought. Yes, and so Naomi, um, is your motion to create the accountability committee um due to some of the behavior that has been displayed in the chat? by Alan. Naomi, do you have a response? Sorry, guys, I have to keep switching from Bluetooth to like speaker. So when I go to reply, just give me like two seconds to switch over. Um, but yeah, so I think I honestly think it'd be a great idea just because I feel like we are all very passionate about what we say and do. And I don't want to single out a single person, but I do think it would be very responsible if we had someone specifically monitoring that and calling people out when they are acting um, inappropriately in the chat. Because I believe that everyone should have a right to say what they want to say and stand up for what they want to say, uh, or I'm sorry, for what they believe in. But there's no reason that we should be disrespecting one another and putting specific language in the chat that is not okay um, so, and disrespecting the historical context of what other people so are saying. Naomi, and, are, go ahead, are you... Gabe asked a question. So are you saying that you are erecting this? Are you proposing this erection of this committee to call out Alan for his language? Yes or no? I think it's a simple question. Oh, okay. I know you don't. It's, we don't want to call somebody out on this and that, but you're the one that brought the motion. So is that who this committee is about? Oh, no, absolutely not. OK. So then why are we erecting a committee? Gabe, I have some to say. Gabe, go ahead. OK, so. Cool. So within, um, let's see. Oh, it's right there. Oh, it's up there. Awesome. I don't put it there, but thank you. So if if we want the committee to be formed, then like it has to be created. Um, an incident, the incident in question, the incident in question was the disrespect that was felt through the chat by Al by Alan. Okay. Um, so that like if you want to create the count, it has to be like said right according to that like to address the incident in question and so if we create it it can't just be to create it but more so because of the incident right yes thank you Gabe okay oh wait and so oh then okay does that mean that like the the motion is was drawn out okay so I'm confused then because can I can I just tell you guys like why I think the committee would be like a good idea and it doesn't necessarily have to be one specific person? Is that can I tell you guys that real quick or would that go against like the rules? Because I feel like it would help clarify things. I'm down for that, please. OK, sweet. So I feel like, you know, we have our disagreements as a council. And don't get me wrong, Alan and I have our beef 100%. I don't agree with 95% of the words that come out of his mouth, but that's not just the problems that I think happen in here. I think that a lot of us have beef with each other. And sometimes, for the most part, we are very respectful about our differences and express those in a very, um, you know, adequate manner. Um, but I do think that it would be wise to have a different committee in there. So when Alan and I disagree, or if like, 
Taylor and, you know, Gabe disagree or Chad and Dan, whoever, it doesn't matter that when they disagree, then that's being mediated. Because right now I think that we've been embarrassing ourselves like a few times, not even going to lie this past semester. And the students see these. And I've had students come to me and talk to me about how we are expressing our differences between one another on these chats. And I don't think that's a very good image for TSAC. I think that we should be mediated because clearly we're not showing the responsibilities. I'm sorry, the capabilities of being able to communicate our differences effectively. And that's reflecting on TSAC and reflecting on MSU, which means why would students want to work with us if we're not showing that we are responsible enough to um, so, effectively communicate our differences. So my motion, Dan, to be specific, is to create this committee because of the incidents as a whole TSAC has had on one another and embarrassing ourselves on the media without effective communication. So how are we going to have, my question is this then, because how are we going to, who's going to be a chair for the entire committee if the entire committee's up for inspection? How will we know when the work's done? How will we know when the work's done? How will we know who's being held accountable? But well, go ahead, James. So yeah, just shown up there and in our constitution, this has to be directed at a student council member, not the council at a whole. So if we do not have a certain student or a council member we have in focus, then we have no reason to call the motion this. Go ahead, Alan. Then, oh, progressive stack, I'm sorry, Mike, and then Alan, I'm sorry. Okay, I Naomi, thing. I would like to make a clarifying motion to your, or a clarifying um, motion. I, um, to, I, sorry, I leave my words here. I want to erect an accountability committee to address behavioral issues by Alan Williams. That is the motion. I want, to see, is that a friendly amendment? Can we clarify behavioral issues? Because to me, that's too ambiguous. It doesn't mean anything to me. The Naomi language that was used deal. today or overall? Overall. Uh, Alan. No, I'm just listening. I'm going to keep on uh, holding on. I, I was going to say I agree with James. Um, it does have to do with a specific person is according to the Constitution. Um, I want to hear what kind of uh, behavioral issues Mike was talking about, as well as language. If I said one word that anybody else hasn't heard in a classroom in this university, I'd like to know what it is and how I offended anybody. But just offending people doesn't make them right. And um, I would defend my right to freedom of speech and representing students all across the university who don't agree with everybody here. And um, I'd agree with, I, I would, uh, Defend your right to do the same thing. Speak for other people on their behalf. Go ahead. Uh, Stephanie. Uh, so since we're we know what the motion's about, um, would that then mean that we're gonna vote on it or what's going on? If there's a second. I think Gabe second that no. He oh, feels like he's second. Okay. It was proposed as a friendly amendment to Naomi's um, motion, and we didn't hear if it was friendly or not. So. Naomi said deal in the chat. Yes, I believe yeah. she said this. Deal. Is that what, oh, is that what deal? Oh, deal. Okay. deal. okay. Sorry, yes. folks. I'll admit my I'm getting some sort of lag in the chat on here, so I apologize if it's a little inaccurate. Oh, and I see your second game now. Thanks. Naomi. Um, to answer Alan's question, there were several things you said since the beginning of class that it has nothing to do necessarily with your opinion. Your opinion is 100% valid. It's how you try to force your opinion upon others and the fact that you don't put any historical context into the things you say, specifically about the genocide, wanting to remove the word genocide from our amendment or our resolution on getting uh, Indigenous Peoples Day recognized here on campus to get the school closed down in recognition of that. Okay. You okay. Often, I'm answering the question he, asked, he wanted to know the answer to, so I'm giving him the answer so you guys can have that clarification. Um, and then you also were trying to push upon, when I was saying previously about pushing upon your opinion, this was when we were talking about Roe versus Wade, and you upset all of the individuals within that class right there. And nobody said to speak up about it because, and we did speak up about it, but you continued and continued and continued. And then talking about the Indigenous Peoples Day res, um, resolution as well, you did not have any historical context as to why that would be a complete absurd question to ask. That's why it was offensive. And you're right, your opinion doesn't necessarily have to be offensive or non-offensive for it to be considered valid. And that's fine. 
but that does not mean that you need to sit there. Okay. And point of order, point of order, point of order here. This can, this can be used, we can talk about this stuff during the committee. So I think we get the point of what you're saying there, Naomi. Um, so, because, yeah, let's just call the question on this. Um, the, call the question with the formation of the committee and the logistics, Naomi, about what you're talking about can be discussed with inside the committee. All right. Alan. Nay. Alex. Uh, abstain. Chad. Aye. Gabe. Aye. James. I uh, abstain. Mike. Yes. Naomi. Paul. Yes. Yes. Bree. Aye. Stephanie. Yes. Taylor. Yes. Dan. No. Let me just tally up the votes here. It passes. The accountability structure is erected. Now there a chair must be elected. Is there any nominations? Gabe, your hands up. Okay. And then you put it down. Okay. okay. Oh. No, oh, it's still oh. up. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. my, my computer is really badly lagging. You're good. Um, awesome. Um, I would nominate, I want to nominate um, either Re for the chair if Re is capable, is, if this is within their boundaries, or uh, Chad. Okay, so. Either one of them. But okay, Re so nomination. Re, do you accept the nomination? I'm afraid I don't. I don't think I could be able to put the time into this, but thank you. Okay, so Gabe's second nomination was Chad. Chad, do you accept the nomination? I will accept this nomination. Okay, the nomination has been accepted to the erected committee. Paul. I want to just uh, add my voice to this nomination. I think it can be a better person on the council. Chad kind of just sits in the middle of this council. Um, and has a, I think, a, a working relationship with all of us uh, in a way that maybe we don't all share necessarily. So I think it's a good choice. All right, good choice for the erected committee. Chad is the chair. All right, well. Go. Cool. So, and just to clarify our next steps for said committee, Chad will be appointing five members of the council to help carry out this four. Thank you for the quick correction. I stand corrected four fellow counselors try and you know choose some uh, good sort of people and we can actually um you know pursue this work and and remember uh, remember to revisit the resolution we have on this because it really does speak to you know handling this in a delicate and social just well in a way that's restorative restorative justice so this isn't to attack anyone this is to you know rectify something so thank you so four, uh, four. four will be appointed to the committee but not in this meeting correct Need a point of clarity. Correct. OK, so. All right, well, according to our agenda, public comments over. I move to adjourn the meeting. Seconded. All right, meetings adjourned. Thank you, Council.